Hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And I got all your letters. I didn't do the my reaction video yesterday. I was out getting my uh my I had to get my bats and Nutella from from the Costco there. We had to get it to U Haul out. Go get our bats and Nutella, and it broke down on the way. So there was there was a rigmarole. Have you heard that rigmarole? Ever heard that word? You should use it. Use it all the time. That's your word of the day tomorrow. Use it. Rigmarole. Okay. So that's why I didn't get it done anyway. So I'm going to put them both together. I'm going to do the 11th and 12th reaction, and you're going to sub to my channel right now. Right now. I didn't go through all of this for the, for you to just sit there and listen and like it and not even sub up to my channel. Okay, don't sub. I don't care. It doesn't really. Whatever. Don't. I don't care. I don't care. I actually care a lot, but that's all right. Um, okay, so I'm going to do all the my reaction videos as I've been doing. I know you all watched it already, right? Like you've been watching them all the time. I, I, if you haven't, I'll show you what we've been, you've been missing. This is all part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network and the NHL Pearl of Wisdom show that I do when I feel like it every once in a while. We also do uh, live streams, you know. I do live streams with Peyton on the radio. So if you sub up, you can be part of that. All right. Let's get to my reaction. This is one take, no editing. This is a no editing YouTube channel. So if you're looking for all the fancy take all day professional video nonsense, well, you can move on right now because homie don't play that. All right. Rangers versus Penguins. And uh, I, I was... Before this game, I'm like, the Penguins have owned them, owned them all over the place. And I'm a professional handicapper, too. You go to bpalpicks.com. So I stayed off the side on this. Uh, and if you like free picks, comment in the comment section. I can set you up with some. But I stayed off the side. People I really trust liked the Rangers. I didn't do it, though, but I did take the over. There's just goals and goals and goals on this in this series. And it was a big win for the Rangers, no doubt about it. A uh, big enough win that you kind of wonder if maybe they, they'll be able to pull it out, go back to Pittsburgh now, and then come back home. I mean, that's asking a lot with this Pittsburgh team. But let's, Domingue did not look the greatest, and he's not the greatest. That's the part of this, Mr. all you Rangers fans out there, uh, that you are, I'm sure you're well aware of, is Domingue is not very good. Pittsburgh has been using their experience and savvy to beat the Rangers with a really bad goaltender. And if, you, if, if the Rangers lose there, you know, there's a chance they did. Adam Fox had his best game of the series by a long shot. He was excellent. Lafreniere potted one. Nice to see him potting a couple in the playoffs, showing that he's a money guy. I think he's going to rock it next year, don't you? Don't you? I think so. Truba pots one. You know, the, the Rangers were just flying. They were flying, and that's what they got to do against Pittsburgh. Uh, the first couple of games... They look kind of apprehensive, uh, worried about making mistakes maybe, and that's common with a young team, right? But if they keep on playing like they did, if they can do this on the road against Pittsburgh, which is a lot tougher, in that building with the noise. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention, and you guys all know this, One another reason why they won is Crosby got injured and nobody knows what happened. Oh, my gosh. You just might have her, buddies. You just might have it. Crosby got injured, and this team is like everything. Crosby is everything to this team. Gunsell had six shots. Pittsburgh fans, what are you thinking? They're going to put it away, though, right, Pittsburgh fans? You're not going to let the Rangers come back and win three on you, even with Crosby out of the lineup? I'll tell you, it makes it a lot 
more daunting to do it without uh, without Crosby. I mean, the rain, Pittsburgh on paper is not that much better than the Rangers. You know, there's a so. Let's see, what did he play? Ten minutes and forty nine seconds. I, tell me in the comment section, Pittsburgh fans, if you know what happened. What's wrong with them? But I mean, Deming even stopped a lot of shots, really. But the Rangers were just not losing this game. They were just not doing it in their barn. And uh, they played definitely the best game of the series. Maybe the best game I've ever seen them play. I have seen them play in the playoffs the last two years as they've had this group. So, anyways, Rangers fans, tell me what you thought about the game. Uh, Shesterkin put it together. He looked a lot better. Of course, what are you thinking about what's going on in, with Pittsburgh? Did they play seven defense? Ah, smart move. They played seven defense. Oh, and then Nemeth, Nemeth either got hurt or could be benched. Really, why were you playing Nemeth anyways? But, but anyways, that's all I got to say about that. I mean, it was just the best game I think I've seen them play in the last two years. Tell me if you agree with me, Rangers fans. And Pittsburgh fans, what do you think? Are you going to beat these guys at home with no Crosby? It's more intriguing than we thought it was going to be. If Crosby's still not going to be there. And I, I, I got to figure he won't be because if Crosby had to come out in the first place, I think it's pretty unlikely that he'll be back in or he, he'll be, how healthy he's going to be when he does go back in, if he does go back in. All right, next game, Panthers versus the Capitals. And, uh, I'm, I, I got to say this, guys, Capitals. Florida won the game. They deserve to win the game. They're finally starting to break through the Washington trap that was good that they've been doing, which uh, you know is really the only way that Washington was going to win this series is they played like a really successful trap, and uh, they had been up until now. But Florida got through at home and looked much more like the regular season Florida Panthers. Tell me in the comment section, Florida Panthers fans, sub yourself up. Comment in the comments. Sub to my YouTube channel. Let me know what you think. That, you know, they didn't look like the team that was playing in the regular season so far this series. And most of that had to do with the fact that they Washington was trapping, and you don't get trapped that much in the regular season. Um, not to mention... In the regular season, you don't have an opportunity of a team to play you over and over again to see how they can trap you. And I was wondering if Florida was going to be able to break it, and they did today. They did today. They did uh, very, very well today. Um, and that's after Washington getting up 3-0 early. I thought Florida was going to be the one up, seriously. I really thought Florida was going to be the team that came up. Bobrovsky looked a little shaky. That concerns me. Do you guys think it's time? I know you, they're not going to now. But when is it? What what might happen that Spencer Knight might go in? Because I'm I'm telling you, I just don't think Bobrovsky is the guy. I just don't think it. I know you're paying him $10 million a year, but I don't think anybody's winning a cup with Bobrovsky in that. Let me know. In the comment section, what you think about that? Uh, but for Hagee comes back, he's having a peaceful, beastly playoffs. If you remember when I did the pre-playoff picks, I said watch out for Carter Verhage in the playoffs. He's that type of player. I thought Bennett would be putting up more points than he is right now, but they got that. Uh, is it Bennett, Reinhardt, and Verhage line up there? I mean, that's a that's a very playoff line. These guys are going to run you all over the place. Um, and then Verhege again from Carter. And Claude Giroux threw one in there at the end. But it's a lot harder to trap on the road. But, because, but it's also the better thing to do on the road. Because you have last change and or you don't have last change and you don't have the matchups and all that kind of stuff like that, 
And I think they got ex uh, Washington got exposed. Look at he uh, Laviolette shortened the bench big time. Dowd only eight minutes. McMichael six. Larson seven. Uh, he shortened that bench a lot. He was playing the veterans quite a bit, and that's going to bode well for you guys. Going back to Washington, playing the crap out of their vets. I think they're going to be tired. I like Florida and Washington. Just saying. I think Florida's going to end it in Washington. Um, sorry, Washington fans. I haven't even really talked about you right now. But do you, do you not agree that you know it wasn't very likely that Washington was going to be able to keep on trapping Florida like that? Great job. You know, probably the only way they were going to win. Uh, I think they did as best as they possibly could. But, and was it all, we, we, did you th actually think Ilya Samsonov was going to be able to keep on, and maybe he'll get back to being good again. He has a couple games and he, you know, he's always inconsistent. So, uh, look at uh, Florida did rest, I mean, they played him a little more, their fourth line, Hornquist, Mam Mammon, and Huberto played a ton of minutes. So Barca played 22, but I mean, that guy can play 50 minutes a game, I swear to God. Um, it's going to be an inter interesting, the thing that scares me is Kim Bob Roski. He didn't have a terrible game. I know he didn't have a terrible game. He had a shaky start, and then he got back into it. He got, he got uh, grounded again. Not to mention, Florida really has been trying to figure this out. They've been trying to figure this out. It's the first, a lot of them, the first play playoffs like Reinhardt, Lausterreinen, um, Verhege played in Tampa Bay, so he he played a little bit of playoffs, and of course, um, uh, Sam Bennett played a little bit in Calgary, but most of these guys have not played in the playoffs. Ekblad didn't hardly any. Of course, he played with Florida. Gudis did play a couple. Sherratt made it to the finals. But Forsling, Uyghur, Montour, no. So they got a lot of green guys that were trying to figure it out. And a green coach. And uh, so in the, with that in mind, I think Florida has actually done fairly well. But uh, I think they win, Washington fans. I don't know. I'll tell, I know you're going to smack me when I send this over here. But I just can't, I th I just can't see Washington winning the series. All right, next. Oops, wrong one. I do this on the fly, as you know, as you should know anyways. So there's no editing. I don't change anything. This is completely off the top of my head. I haven't even thought about what I was going to say or anything. Flames versus Stars. And uh, I'll tell you, the Flames picked this, the Stars apart tonight. They allowed the Stars to play their... Uh, you know, man on man, on top of you type system, basically slowing the dead game down as much as they possibly can to to break down the flame speed and look for their opportunities. It was almost it's like a it was like it's like a chess game playing against the char the stars and the flames. I thought picked it perfect. I had I'm a professional handicapper. And I had the Flames in regulation and the under here. Um, I mean, pretty easy to take the under in these these games. Dallas Stars. I they 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 seem morally opposed to scoring goals. I swear to God, uh, except for Jason Robertson. But they play a system that is going to, for the most part, uh, who scored the uh, Mangiapane, right? Mangiapane, and then. Who got the? Because it's not even updated yet. But Manjo Penny got the game winner. Uh, I love the way Calgary played in the second. They just started picking it up. They 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 went with them, looking for weaknesses for the first period with Dallas, and then they started picking up the pace and pressuring and pressuring and pressuring. Uh, especially the last half of the second and the third period, they went for blood, and that's really what they did, and it was awesome to see. Um, Dallas just doesn't have the guns to win the series. I was never, even though they did, they've been doing well at finding ways to pot a couple here and there. And of course, Ottinger has been a beast. 
but you know, Jamie Ben is supposed to be the big captain there. I hardly notice him. Sagan, is it time to retire already, dude? Like. You're just not a nine, ten million dollar player anymore, and it's really dragging this team down. Honestly, I mean, he's not terrible, but he's not what you would expect from uh, a guy who's made, who's getting a superstar contract. He's by no means a superstar. Ropo hints, uh, Robertson, they're the future and the now of this team that they have to build around. And in the off season, I don't know. I'll said it last time. I'll say it again. If they can, I, I mean, maybe they have tried to get find ways to move Sagan or and or Ben. Those contracts would be difficult to move. But I think it's time. This it's just Dallas has just spinning their wheels here with those two in the lineup. I believe. What do you think, Dallas fans? Audi. Don't wait. Don't do what Anaheim did and waste Ottinger's great best years, just sucking every year. Because every year, these guys just get older and not better. And Dallas has got to, you know, be a bubble team, just barely make the playoffs one round and out. Nobody wants that. I don't want that for the Dallas fans. They're freaking awesome. Uh, Calgary. They, like I said, they just. Backlund had an amazing game today. It was probably one of the, like, he's he's very underrated. I still don't think he's a second-line center, but he's one of the best third-line centers in the league, and he fills in that second-line role actually just fine. Um, on, a, on a really deep team, forward team, he probably would play third-line center, but it's okay to have him in the second-line center. He does everything. He's great to watch. He's a great two-way guy. Um, and he had, you know, he had a couple points too, which really helps. Matt, Matthew Kachuk, um, I think they switched their lineups a little around too, right? They took Kachuk off the big line because they wanted to get, as Sutter said, they want to get more pace on that line, meaning that Kachuk's not playing with enough pace. That's what they're saying. What do you guys think there? I, I kind of noticed that too. I don't know. I'm really surprised. I thought Kachuk would be more of a factor than he is so far. And maybe he will be as the playoffs go on here. But he actually looks kind of thrown off. Maybe he's a little bit injured a bit or something. I don't know. Um, to Foley. What is he got? Like 36 shots in the series and he hasn't scored yet? Just totally snake bit. But man, Joe Pandy, that was a beautiful shot. Woo! Pass from Drew Branson, too. And... Uh, Pass from Gu was it Good Branson? Back oh no, sorry, it was Zadaroff and Backlund. Sorry, I thought it was Good Branson, but um, beautiful shot on the top hand corner. I love the way he goes down that wing and just pots it up there, man. He is just beautiful that way. So simple, you know. Just skate really fast and pick a corner. I'm just gonna skate really fast and pick a corner. That's what I'm gonna do, and he does it. And he does it very well. Talking about that, uh, Calgary as well had seven defensemen. I love coaches that do this in the playoffs. Give some guys a break, especially their younger guys. Um, he thought that some of the younger guys were getting maybe overplayed. However, Anderson and Hannafin still played 22 minutes, but I think he was more referring to a guy like Shillington that looked a little overwhelmed this playoff so far. So take his minutes down. And, uh, you know, put Stone in there. He's got a blistering shot. Play him in the right situations. And just have a little more energy for your D in the third period. I, I really like the, the co coaches that do that in the playoffs. It, I think in the long run, it helps, again, in third periods and stuff like that. Gives, uh, gives the defense a little more legs. And Markstrom. Was did everything he needed to do tonight, like usual. He's amazing, just amazing. These two goaltenders have been the two best goaltenders in the league, in the playoffs so far this year. All right, that's for the eleventh. Uh, I'm gonna do some. I'm gonna do some games for the twelfth as well because I didn't get to do my reaction video yesterday. 
And uh, so Dallas is on the ride now. The Rangers are still on the ride. They're going to Pittsburgh. And uh, that's going to be a tough one. Holy crap. Uh, and what it was, oh yeah, and the Panthers, they went up 3-2, right? They went up 3-2. They go to they go to Washington, and I think they'll put it away there. All right. Tuesday. I'll just go over these quick. Uh the Hurricanes Bruins, the Hurricanes just played a beautiful game. Just beautiful. That's that's what everybody's expecting from the Hurricanes. I, I thought the Bruins might be able to win this series because of course, Anderson was out, but Ranta has been fine. And but and also because Ranta gets injured all the time. So I thought there was a chance of that. But with Ranta back in and the way the Hurricanes are playing right now, now it's a huge challenge for them to go play the Bruins in Boston. Huge win. It, it It's always a huge win to win the last one, the fourth one. There's something about winning in Boston, especially when you're, you know, it's going to give them, if they can win in Boston, it'll give this young team so much confidence going into uh, the next rounds for sure. Uh, as far as Boston is concerned, you know, they're not going to give up. You got Marshawn, Bergeron. Bergeron almost sounds like he's on the brink of retiring, honestly. Uh it would be nice if they got some defensemen back. I don't know if that's going to happen or not. But I'm leaning the Hurricanes to win there. Um, Maple Leafs Lightning. What a great win by the Maple Leafs. Might be one of the best wins I've, uh, in playoff wins of the last, you know, lots of years for Toronto. Huge to, to come back against Tampa. They have the ex, the last, like this didn't happen before. Yeah, but the thing is, here's the thing that has me a little bit concerned for you Toronto fans here is that really Tampa Bay outplayed them in their own barn. Uh, it's they're fortunately fortunate that Vasilevsky has not been his usual self because honestly, I think Tampa Bay would be on their way to winning this series if he was. Nylander decided to wake up in that game, didn't he? Yes. I love, what was that quote that Dubas said? He was like, Nylander is a guy who um, one minute makes you shake your head and the next minute does something that no one in the world can do. And that is so true. When he's hot, he is amazing. But he is, he's a very strange player. <laughs> he misses his checks sometimes. He's, you don't know where his head is sometimes. I think he just kind of plays all wild. Like he's not even thinking out there. It's all instinct. And somehow that instinct hurts him and the team. It's like if you could control that instinct so he didn't do these plays where he basically just leave guys totally on their own, misses his checks, all that kind of stuff like that, then it would be wonderful. And then there's times where he just doesn't seem like he's in it. It's like, and then he just wakes up and he's, he's where's this guy? It looks like Peter Forsberg out there. Incredible. Um, so they go back to Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay, I don't know if you heard, has not lost back-to-back in the last 16 times of coming off a loss. 17, I think, now. So at home, it's going to be a huge, just like I was saying with Carolina, it's going to be a huge, huge game for them. And uh, I don't know. I think Tampa Bay is going to win it. Sorry. Sorry. I I doubt very much that Sergachev got injured in this game as well. I, I, it's, I'm going to go with the – got to go with the trend. It would be enormous. Just like I was saying with Carolina, the confidence Toronto would have to go into Tampa Bay and win here would be amazing. I just don't think it's going to happen. Tell me what you think, Toronto fans. Sorry about that. I don't mean to piss you off, but uh, what do you think of Nylander? My Nylander statement, sir. Do you, th- do you agree with Dubas with what he said? Sometimes he just does things that nobody else in the world can do, and then other times he leaves you shaking your head. It's uh, He's enigmatic, as they like to say. All right. 
Next. Uh, Blues versus Wild. I didn't get to see this game because I was doing the stream for the Kings, so I'll just quickly say he just hugely dropped the ball. And Flurry didn't have a great night as far as I understood. Kaprizov played amazing, and not really anybody else did. So um, that was a big win. They had to. Bertuzzo and Letty came back in for the Blues. Now you're going to go back home and play the Blues at home on your ride. When you couldn't do it in your own barn, I'm liking the Blues. Finally, Oilers and Kings, and uh, it's my team. It is the most talk about the, a, a team that makes you want to cry so often. Duncan Keith. What in the world did we I, I have people saying Duncan Keith was a great pickup before this happened. I, for the life of me, do not understand how anybody could ever have thought that Duncan Keith, that $5 million for two years, 39 or 38 years old, didn't matter how, you know what, it doesn't matter how old he is. All you had to do is watch him in Chicago last year. The guy was crap last year already. So he's going to all of a sudden be good here at $5 million a year and it's in a, in a in a flat cap world, ridiculous. And um, the Oilers just don't know when to put their pay, to have their pace. That that's really what I've come down to with the Oilers, is they don't know when to play their top pace. Beginning of a game after you just crapped the bet against LA the game before. Yeah, you got to get up here. You got to, you're giving LA a, a young team with, uh, you know, Quick, who is doing great for his age, but I mean, he's not spectacular. But you got Dursey, Anderson, Waugh, Roy, Waugh, I don't know which one. Uh, all super young. You got to get all of them like stink on poop, man. First thing. And they did not do that. Um, I had a conversation with a guy's last name was Becker in the Facebook groups. And I said that the last game that Edmonton played was worse than the one that LA lost eight to two. And actually I have a guy who is one of those stats guys. Uh, uh, his name's Peyton on the radio. Um, he, he does analytics and I was right. LA actually played way better than Edmonton did um, analytically in that game and it just quick didn't have a good night and you know some some breakdowns here and there bad bounces whatever it happens but Edmonton just played like ass and now they come into their own barn and it was just more ass it, it was now that being said LA played really well I think LA played better this game than they did when they beat at home when they beat Edmonton 4 0. But it's hard to say because Edmonton played so bad that game. I think Edmonton played a little better this game. Um, but LA was all over them. And LA is always going to be all over you. This is a McClellan coach team, the most underrated coach in the league. And he knows how to, he, he, he gets his guys, they, they play, guys play for him. And they listened to him. We had him in Edmonton. I hated it when he left. And everybody on this team plays for McClellan and plays exactly the way he wants to play. They, their anticipation is better than Edmonton than Edmonton's by a long time. And Buddy, I said, I um, he was getting mad at me, Becker, because I, I sounded like I was poo pooing L.A. Well, they have less talent, top-end talent, than Edmonton does, right? Um, it's a, it's a, a work-together, work-for-each-other type team. There's not, besides Kopitar, who's maybe at this age not as much of a superstar as he once was, but still very good, without uh, Dowdy in, I mean, this team is a lunchbox group that is lunchbox in the hell out of Edmonton. Simple as that. Edmonton looks lost out there. 
And LA just keeps a steady pace all the time. Edmonton is a team that has to play at a high speed. And they can't do it all game, but they got to pick the right times to do it. In the third period, they did it. They went hard. They need to do that in the first. You need to get up on LA right away, man. You got to get the first goal against LA. It's LA is fantastic with the lead. They play an awesome type of game with the lead. Anyways, I think uh, I, I picked Edmonton in seven when I did my video, but I also said that's probably a homer pick because in my heart of hearts, in my head, actually, my heart was Edmonton, but my head was saying LA the whole time. All right, so that was my reaction video for all of them. Have a great day, everybody. Uh, thanks for your letters. I'm sorry I was late. Sub yourself up. Sub up. Because I want to talk to you in the comment section. Oh, yeah, that's why I do these things. It's fun. Have a great day. Okay, bye.